Happy Friday, ladies and gentlemen. Well, that was nice. I nice too, but definitely different. But how is it different? They both have a voice and orchestra, so it's not instrument types. Maybe the pitch? No, that's not it. That's weird. Even though these two voices are saying exactly the same thing, there's something about these voices that lets me know that one voice is different from another voice. We call this timbre, the individual sound of each instrument or voice. Sometimes instead of the word timbre, musicians will use the word tone color. Either word means the same thing, so don't be confused if I intermingle them. Tone color, timbre, timbre, tone color, potato, potato. We have no way of knowing, but it's exceedingly likely that the first musical instrument on this planet was the voice. Some of us have a very nasal sounding voice, and others have a breathy one, and still others have a gritty one or a soulful one. Sometimes where you grow up can affect your particular sound. People from all across the United States have very different accents. This can affect how they speak, but also how they sing. We could probably come up with specific words to help us describe all these different sounds, but for now, it's good enough to know that everybody's voice has unique sound and we learn to distinguish these sounds because of their unique vocal timbre. One other concept that can definitely affect a person's individual voice is their register. Register is the range of notes a voice or instrument can reach. Every person or instrument has their highest possible note and their lowest possible note. What's left in the middle is their register. Even among people, there's a great amount of differences between registers. That being said, we tend to classify these vocal registers in four major categories. Bass, the lowest range singers. This classification is reserved for men only. There's also another low range for men called baritone. Baritone is just a smidge higher than bass. Famous baritone singers include Johnny Cash, David Bowie, Al Green, Josh Groban, Trent Reznor, and this guy. Never gonna give you up, never gonna let you down, never gonna run around and desert you. Tenor, the medium low range for singers. This classification is typically reserved for men, though once in a while an adult woman can fall into this range as well. Famous tenor singers include Freddie Mercury, Adam Levine, Bono, Steven Tyler, Justin Timberlake, and this guy. So, the medium high range for singers. This classification is typically reserved for women and children, boys or girls. Like tenor, once in a while a man can be classified as an alto as well. Famous alto singers include Adele, Amy Winehouse, Miley Cyrus, Annie Lennox, Reba McIntyre, and this gal. Soprano, the highest range of singers. This classification is reserved for women and children, boys and girls. No men here. Famous soprano singers include Mariah Carey, Dolly Parton, Kristen Chenoweth, Diana Ross, Julie Andrews, and this gal. amazing how all these voices have similar registers, but they're still totally different voices? Thus, the nature of timbre. It's much more than just how high or low a voice goes. After the voice, what was the first instrument? Most likely, it was some sort of drum, something that was hit to create the pulsing rhythm inside our bodies. This drum was the first member of the percussion family. Like the voice, instruments can also be classified. We classify instruments by how they're played. Percussion instruments are grouped together because in order to play them, you must hit them or shake them. Many, many instruments fall into this category, including all different kinds of drums, bass drum, snare drum, timpani, bongos, congas, tabano, djembe. It also includes toy instruments, triangle, tambourine, shakers, maracas, cymbals, claves, and kabasa. Kabasa. In addition, there are pitched instruments, xylophone, marimba, vibraphone, bells, and chimes. Yo, this screen is getting full. Finally, there's one instrument you might not think of as a percussion instrument, but definitely is. The piano. Okay, time for a new instrument family. At some point after the voice and drum, somebody found a piece of wood and found that by cutting some holes into it and blowing into it, you could make some music. 
thus the first flutes and the first members of the woodwind family. Woodwind instruments are recognized because one blows into the instrument to make the sound. Some are like the flute and you can make sounds just by blowing into them. The recorder is another instrument like that. Some woodwinds add in one extra bit, a reed. A reed is a piece of wood that is put into the mouthpiece, or where the person blows into the instrument. The person then blows through the reed to make the instrument sound. Some instruments have just one reed, like the clarinet or saxophone. Some instruments have two reeds, placed back to back. Bassoon and oboe are both double reed woodwind instruments. It probably also didn't take long before humans realized that strings made of various fibers had great potential to make sound. Any instrument where the string is a major part of how the instrument sounds is classified as a string instrument. That includes violin, viola, cello, upright bass, and harp. But it also includes some instruments not traditionally found in the symphonic orchestra. Instruments like guitar, mandolin, electric bass, and my favorite... Ukulele! Some of you Smarty McSmarty Pants might also be saying to yourself, Hey, doesn't the piano have strings? Didn't you say it was a percussion instrument? Why isn't the piano a string instrument? <laughs> to you Smarty McSmarty Pants, I say, well spotted. Also, <laughs> you're totes right. Some people would classify it that way. But because of the hammer striking the strings on the inside of the instrument and your fingers striking the keys on the outside, it tends to be classified as a percussion instrument. Weird, right? And finally, we have the brass family. The brass family, like the woodwinds, require a person blowing into the instrument to make it sound. But the way they blow, or rather buzz, makes all the difference. When you press your lips against the mouthpiece of the brass instrument, you must make your lips vibrate like so. <laughs> no brass skills. I got voice skills, I got percussion skills, I got string skills, I got woodwind skills, but for brass, not so much. Instead I better find an expert. Roll to 12! That's how it's supposed to work. Instruments in the brass family include trumpet, the trombone, the French horn, euphonium, and tuba. Most selections of music have a very particular sound by putting together music ensembles. There are very traditional ensembles. When you put together a group of voices, you get a choir. When you group together woodwinds, brass, and percussion, you get a concert band. When you group together a large amount of strings and a few brass, percussion, and woodwinds, you get a symphony orchestra. But of course, this is just the beginning. There are jazz bands that use these instruments, rock bands that use these. But really, you can pair together whatever you want. You are only limited by your imagination and audiation. Vocal timbre, register, instruments, and ensembles. All of these concepts function as part of the timbral element of music. Next time, we'll explore the fifth element of music, expression. But for now, a haiku. The best part is that no two timbres sound the same. A thousand colors. Now it's your turn. Click on one of these videos to see if you can decide which part of register, instrument, or ensemble I'm showcasing.